Welcome. Everyone is a Samsung Galaxy Fold 2 and today I'll show you how to go through the setup process of the device. So when you boot it up for the first time, you'll be presented with this screen right here. So simply start off by selecting your language. For me it's going to be English. There we go. Tap on OK. And then let's tap on the arrow. Now we have ability to connect to our mobile network. This is done by simply inserting a SIM card as well. Uh, without it, well, we can't really connect to it. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna simply skip it. Uh, the moment you insert it, you can, either it will be on or you can access it to the notification panel and turn on LTE or whatever it is, or 5G. Um, then we have check out some info to get started. So we have end user uh, license agreement, uh, sending of diagnostic data and stuff like that. Now at the bottom we have an option to agree to all of them uh, but in all honesty we only have to agree to the first one which is user agreement right at the top. As you can see this is the only one that doesn't have the optional option. Uh, everything like with the optional in parentheses at the end is well optional so you don't have to actually agree to it. So from there tap on next and then you can connect to your Wi-Fi. Now, if you don't have a Wi-Fi, you can completely skip this by tapping the skip. If you do, once you connect to it, you will also have the ability to then log into your Google account later on throughout the setup process. Now, if you choose to skip this, you can still connect to your Google account later on. Um, it will basically be in a different place. So, and that, if you choose to skip it, you will find it in the settings under like accounts. Um, I'm gonna skip it, honestly. And we have copy apps and data. Uh, so obviously it allows you to restore the, all the device to this one and get all the data from your old device here. I'm gonna set it up as new so don't copy. Then we have date and time. Uh, now if it's set correctly just disregard and go further. If you connect to Wi-Fi it most certainly should be set uh, correctly and if it's not you can tap right over here and change it to be like it is right now and from there we can or we have the Google services so we have things like use location allow scanning and send user and diagnostic data now you can tap on that drop down and read exactly what it does but the general you know, like gist of it is that uh, use location uses GPS uh, allows apps to use it. Uh, so for instance Google Maps uses it. Uh, so it gives you a correct route when you're using it as a uh, in your car for instance to get location and drive somewhere. Then allows scanning, uh, allows apps uh, and services to scan for Wi-Fi networks and nearby devices at any time. Um, so basically what it's here. Um, so you can turn it on or off. Um, as you can see you can disable both of them. And then you have send user and diagnostic data. Again, you can expand this to have a bit more of a comprehensive overview of what it does. Uh, but it seems a little bit self-explanatory. Send user and diagnostic data basically gathers uh, data on what you do on your device, sends it to Google um, to quotation marks so they can improve um, the usability of the device. Um, so you can also disagree to it if you don't want Google spying on you. So let's tap on accept. And then we have protect your phone. So we have a couple of different ways of doing so. Uh, face recognition, fingerprint, pin pattern, password. Now if you want to choose uh, either one of the two top ones, you will still be required to select uh, either pin pattern or password. You cannot have uh, face or fingerprint without any physical way of unlocking the device. Um, so I'm going to go with a fingerprint. And when you choose one of them, you will see that it automatically prompts you here. Now you, I'll also mention that you can set up pin pattern or password and not set up the fingerprint or face recognition if you don't want to. So I'll actually go back and as you can see, it allows me just to set it up without adding anything else. Um, so let's continue. Pattern. So I'm going to draw the pattern, continue, confirm. And I think I went for the yeah, face recognition. Okay. Uh, do you wear glasses? Not at the moment, but normally I do. 
I'm gonna select no anyway. Continue. And let me just kind of move it out of the way. Give me a sec. There we go. So it basically starts scanning your face, which is 100%, and uh, moves on on itself. So here we have stay on lock screen. Uh, when you unlock with face recognition, stay on the lock screen. Uh, so I think I'm going to disable this. So if I'm correct, yep. So if you disable this, when you unlock the device, it automatically goes to your home screen. Uh, if you have this on and it recognizes your face, it still stays on lock screen, which in my opinion is kind of counterproductive to this option. Uh, so I just prefer to have it off. Uh, useful features, uh, face recognition, uh, faster recognition. Oh, okay, so we have some options right here. So face recognition basically allows you to, uh, if you have added it, this option will otherwise not appear. So faster recognition improves uh, speed but reduces the security. Um, so if you want this, you can enable it. Uh, it will recognize your face faster but reduce the security security of it so it might be easier to in a way break it or trick it um, so if you want it you can enable it if you don't then disable it uh, requires open eye uh, or eyes so if you have closed eyes it will not work again you can select this on or off completely up to you uh, brighten screen and uh, that is so it's easier for you to unlock the device during night so when you're in your home uh, when when you on your lock screen at night you will basically try to unlock it and it will brighten up the screen so it lights up your face so the camera has an easier way of actually unlocking so again if you don't want for instance this uh, i understand that might be a little bit annoying especially uh, during night when you get blasted with light um, so i would probably disable this but that's just my personal taste right here and then we have sign into our samsung account now this step again is completely optional um, if you choose to skip it like so uh, it will give you a message that doing so will, will basically you will miss out on things like samsung cloud bixby galaxy themes find my mobile uh, samsung pass galaxy store and secure folder um, honestly almost all of them apart from maybe galaxy themes um, is completely useless to me uh, now the question is what do you want from your device the device still has uh, google services so things like uh all right, Bixby is, uh, well, it's kind of worse than, for instance, Google. Um, so you can still use Google services. And uh, what I mean is uh, basically, hey, Google Assistant. Uh, Galaxy Store, we have Play Store. So Galaxy Store is obsolete in my opinion. Um, secure, uh, secure folder. I'm pretty sure there is still a different ways of securing the device here without actually having the account. Uh, Find my mobile, again, Google services, you have that already here. Um, Samsung Cloud, Google Cloud. So like I said, uh, basically this continues the pattern that uh, we have basically everything here already uh, without needing the Samsung account. So that's why I'm gonna skip it. And all done. So let's stop on next. And we get this amazing little, uh, before you get started. Now, I already did get started. I started setting up the device. So a little bit late on that one, but hey, I guess uh, the thought counts here. So don't press the screen uh, or the front camera lens with a hard or sharp objects such as pen or oh, fingernails. Didn't know that my fingernails are hard objects, but I guess we learn something every day. Uh, doing so could cause damage uh, such as uh, scratches or dents. I, yeah, honestly, there is way little less force needed to uh, cause those and it doesn't require fingernails, honestly. Um, so yeah. Now moving on, to prevent uh, scratching or uh, screen damage, make sure there is nothing in the middle uh, when you fold your phone, uh, such as cards, coins or keys. So basically when you close your device uh, like so, make sure that there is nothing between. Uh, this well, most certainly will cause some damage. Uh, the display here is uh, fairly soft, almost, not really sure how to describe it. Um, so putting something in there uh, and also putting that in the pocket will most certainly do some harm to your device. So I uh, try to keep stuff away from it. And then this phone isn't dust uh, proof or waterproof. Exposure to water or other liquids uh, or small particles such as sand may cause damage, uh, such as uh, scratches or dents on the screen. Um, 
honestly uh, not sure how water can cause scratches or dents and uh, sand also um, but probably if you're planning to go to the beach I would most certainly not take this phone with me uh, the hinges don't really want to cooperate with sand when it's in there and you may be really careful but just like the up like the dust from the sand almost can make this device a complete nightmare to use when you're trying to open it up and it will have this like grinding sa uh, sand sound from the hinges it is just obnoxiously annoying and i would highly recommend to, to try to stay away from that one um, and obviously the device isn't waterproof which is a bit of a shame for a device that costs two thousand um, dollars so yeah keep it away from water um, uh, try not to uh, get your tears in here when a uh, screen gets scratched um, because that may further cause damage to it and then uh, don't remove the screen protection film uh, don't apply other uh, films or stickers doing so may cause damage to your phone there's a lot of things that can cause damage to this device apparently uh, but if you're wondering about the sticker you can kind of see it right here so where the camera is you can see that there is this kind of like a u-shape uh, that is uh, the cutout on the sticker uh, it does have like a protective film on here now it does say it's advised not to remove it so i'm not sure if you can or cannot um so I'll quickly unlock it my face there we go so um actually my bad here it's actually don't remove it on the sticker that you have uh, when you unbox the device it says it's recommended not to remove it at least in my case it was so there is a little bit of discrepancy here but okay i guess don't remove it in this case and then uh, keep your phone away from credit cards magna uh, medical devices and other objects that call uh, can be affected by magnets so um, probably other things that they should have mentioned probably that more of us will uh, will have as a hard drive now magnets and hard drives don't really go well together um, so try not to place your phone anywhere like near a computer if you have a hard drive somewhere on the top of the case or something like that or on your laptop uh, if it's using well an old HDD kind of hard drive the spinning one because that will cause damage to it uh, if you have an SSD then that doesn't really matter uh, but yeah hard drives uh, damage uh, medical equipment less of us have but I guess also don't keep it close to you if uh, you do which kind of if you have like a pacemaker or whatever they're called I, I, I guess that phone isn't even for you in this case not exactly sure but yeah it can cause damage uh, because it has magnets so once we are aware of before we get started we can click on done and there we go we're now in our glorious device so that is how you would go through the setup process and also get accustomed to some of the things that you shouldn't do with it uh, and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching